Steve Carell said that. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This time I'm building an oak dresser for my kids, and they've waited a long time for this, especially my wife. Uh, and I built it out of three quarter inch oak plywood. And I actually bought all of this from Lowe's. Um, it was uh, that three quarter inch oak plywood, sheets of half inch plywood too, just there. It's the only half inch plywood they had. I have no idea what it's made out of. When I cut into it, it smelled really bad. <laughs> um, so it was my first time really using Lowe's plywood. And I only went there because I had uh, some gift cards. Right there, I'm using some scrap oak that I got, uh, that I harvested from an organ that was no longer working. And so I'm using that to kind of create uh, an edge band joint to connect the top and bottom to the sides. It should be able to create uh, plenty of support for the pocket holes that I decided that I was going to use, uh, but I decided to reinforce them uh, with some oak dowels as well. I'm sure the glue joint just between the oak and then the oak plywood probably would have been fine, but I was going to be using a ton of plywood in this build and this thing was going to be really heavy, so I decided to just reinforce with some 3 8 inch dowels. Just a pro tip, when you're driving in these oak dowels, um, just listen to the tone. Uh, as you're just beating them in because right at the very end it'll start uh, like to dampen just slightly and it'll change tones and that's how you know that you fully seeded the dowel Now that is uh, about 108 inch board of uh, four quarter white oak. I've had it for a while. Um, I think I've had it for at least a year. It's just been sitting and I finally uh, found the right project for this. So I'll be using this uh, to create the leg stretcher assembly, but then also to face and hide all the plywood edges. Using my planer inside my garage is actually really exciting. I just built uh, my own little custom dust port for it so I can connect my dust collector to it. Before I just had to like wheel out my planer uh, facing outside of my garage and then I would just sweep it up later. But it's super nice and uh, feels like a luxury to use. This eight quarter oak, uh, white oak that I'm using now, uh, I've also had, it was an off cut from the oversized chair that I built. It had some cracks in it, but I'm not worried about it. Um, I'm just cutting them into uh, just four pieces and I'm actually just doing some math and making sure I have enough to support the stretcher assembly to the feet as well. Now 
if you're not comfortable with that cut, just don't do it. I felt fine about it. Um, I think the sheer just weight of the uh, eight quarter white oak was just plenty fine. Uh, I think if it was like a thinner stock material, I probably would have made that cut. I probably just would have grabbed uh, just my miter gauge and just done it there. Here I'm cutting the angles on uh, the feet and uh, I was actually kind of nervous about it. I wasn't really sure how it was gonna look, um, but in the end, I'm, I'm happy with it. Here's it all just laid out, just kind of laying down, uh, just to get an idea of what it would look like. Once that was done, I put an eighth inch round over to everything, just to give it uh, a slightly modern look, just to knock it down just a bit. I'm using inch and a quarter fine thread Craig screws. Once that was done, I put it back on top of my workbench and started cutting out the uh, facing for it. This is a lot of going back and forth from my workbench and then walking around to my table saw to trim a little bit more. It's pretty tedious, but it's definitely worth it. Now what I should have done is I should have applied the edge band to my plywood pieces before I assembled the carcass. Uh, because that would have made uh, trimming it to the exact same thickness a lot easier. And the reason why it would be a lot easier is because this is a big, just half inch call it size DeWalt router. And it's pretty hard to balance it just on that three quarter inch edge that I have. Maybe if I had a palm router, it wouldn't be as bad. Maybe you wouldn't need to make sure the edge is on the plywood pieces before you assemble the whole carcass, but I don't have a palm router and I just wasn't really thinking about it. So this right here wasn't too necessary. Um, these pocket holes were going to be covered up by a drawer anyway, uh, but I just had that leftover 3 8 uh, white oak dowel just there. So I'm Thought might as well just do it. Okay, woman. Yes. I said fire. Okay. You got fire. You gotta bring that fire. Okay. Are you sure this thing's ready? Emily. Okay. Fire right there. To the right of my finger. Okay. Push in and pull through. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Over here on the side. Reach. Right there by my finger. Hold up. Right there. Hold up. Okay, go. Right there. Nope, nope, nope. Higher, 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 yep. higher, higher. Oh, a little lower. Right there. Alright, woman. Alright. <clears throat> Look at that. I'm doing it. Wait. You want to keep going or are you done? I guess. Yeah, go. Okay. Ready? Nice. Once the whole carcass was done, I started working on the drawers. And this uh, half inch plywood from from Lowe's um, I mean it, it it looks really nice it's pretty all like straight grain I have no idea what kind of wood it is um, but when I first bought it at home 
you saw at the very beginning of this video that we cut it down just to make it a little bit more manageable for me. Uh, but the other sheet of that half inch plywood, we just kind of left standing up on its side. And after a few days, it started bending in and it kind of looked like a chip. <laughs> and so uh, I just put it on the ground and I flattened it out and I cut it into more manageable pieces. And thankfully when I cut down the rest of it, it all just kind of leveled out. So th that wasn't as big of a problem as I thought it was gonna be. Cool. Now it's time to cut the uh, half inch dado uh, into each of the drawer pieces. I decided to use the half inch plywood as the drawer's bottom as well. Uh, this is gonna be for my kids and who knows, they might just pull out the bottom drawers and decide to sit in them. And I just wanna minimize the chance of these drawers being broken with either a quarter inch bottom or an eighth inch. So I decided the stronger the better. So here's my modified track saw here. And I'm just using it to cut that half inch plywood to more manageable pieces so that I can uh, be able to create uh, the bottoms of it now, the bottoms of the drawers. Um, I kind of messed up on one drawer, and you'll see that a little bit later. I had like cut the width of it a little uh, too long, so I had to really shave it down, um, but it wasn't that much of a problem. Now, I've never built drawers before. I've never assembled drawers before, so this is all just a first for me. I decided uh, to grab some spacer blocks to put them uh, at the back of that cabinet um, and then also use some of that eighth inch uh, backing um, to support it uh, on on the bottom side. So it would sit up about an eighth of an inch. And I think I had it come forward from the back uh, maybe about five eighths of an inch. So that all seemed to go really well. Um, the only thing to really look out for is when you install the other drawers on that center upright is if you're using the same screw holes, uh, then the, the screw tips are gonna hit each other in that center piece. And so you gotta offset them just a little bit. Cool. Did not know that, and I just ran into that problem, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Hey, it actually started snowing, Daddy? Uh, which is pretty crazy. The day before, it was super bright and sunny, and, uh, you know, we're in North Texas and we got some pretty decent snow. But at the end of the day, that same day, uh, by evening, it was all gone. It had all just melted up because it got Daddy, super sunny Daddy, and hot again. Daddy. Pretty crazy. My oh, very real. kids have never really seen snow. Actually, my oldest has. Uh, but my son, he's never seen snow before. Now it's time to work on the drawer faces. I took all of this white oak um, from that organ I harvested. And these are actually the foot pedals of the organ. So I took them off. Uh, they all had like screw holes in them too. And uh, it was really unique. Also on uh, the bottom side of the pedal, uh, they were all numbered. And so they were like imprinted with a number and then coated with a little bit of red. I tried to preserve that as much as possible too. Uh, in order to make the glue up just slightly easier, I decided to just use the screw holes that were already there uh, and use the original screws to put them back in. I later removed some of the screws and then reapplied the screws to, to where you could see it when the drawer opens just because I thought it was interesting. I thought it was cool.
So once those were all glued up, decided to uh, skip plane them through uh, my planer uh, because there was some just in Once that was done and trimmed them to length. And the cutoffs that I received from those eight inch drawers, the three bottom ones, uh, actually made enough stock to give me my six inch faces for uh, my top two drawers. So that worked out really well. I didn't have to use any other wood. It's all the same. I had very, very little scrap by the time it was all done. Now I'm cutting everything to final dimension and sanding and finishing, starting that whole process. I like oak. I'm not a fan of how yellow it gets when you use oil-based products, so I thought polyacrylic would be really nice. Polyacrylic definitely is not as durable, uh, and it's going in my kids' room, so we'll see how it holds up. I might have to reapply some coats like every two years or something. But I really like the uh, natural finish look that it gets. Ready, back up. Back up, Brady. Okay. Got my cards right here. Drawer place in place. <laughs> when installing them, I used the same eighth inch spacers that I used to install the drawers, um, just so that I could get the right uh, distance in between the drawer faces. And when I was stacking the next drawer in, or the next drawer face in, I used just one of the spacers and I lined it up with the half inch plywood that was on the inside. And then I let the face, the oak face of the, the next drawer that was on top sit on that. And then that's when I could use my cards to uh, make sure that it was properly centered on the drawer. I made a simple little jig out of some scrap and uh, all I did was just place it. I, I placed the drawer pull on that piece of scrap and I squared it up to it and then I just traced it around, made some center markings and then transferred those markings uh, a little bit lower to where they needed to be uh, centered on the drawer faces. It was really easy. On the right side of the drawers, I had it face that way. On the left side of the drawers, I just flipped it around and it worked just fine. There you can see on that drawer where I had to really shave it off. I really just, all I did was I just took it to my table saw and I just shaved a little bit just to give me the proper spacing. That was the only drawer that I needed to do it on. Now that it's all done, uh, I just needed to take the drawers off and transport everything upstairs. I'm not really a cabinet maker by any means. I uh, I love woodworking. It gives me an opportunity to think, uh, to pray, uh, to just process things. And so I uh, am just making like a little bit of everything right now. Anything that I think is cool, that I think is interesting. Uh, this is a, probably the first thing that I've made, you know, really for my family, I guess.
It works well. It's all loaded up. Um, the youngest has already opened the bottom two drawers and emptied all of its contents, I think, a few times. But I'm really happy with it. I think it'll hold up nicely. I think it'll last for a long time. Hopefully when it gets passed down, you know, to my kids, hopefully they won't just paint over it. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. Run down the street.